Good evening, this is Rashad Mitchell coming to you live from my YouTube channel. As I continue my part series, the week that was college football history review, the 1969 college football season. This is week 10. I'll be recapping the games that were played on November 22nd, 1969. For week 10, here we go. Princeton beat Dartmouth 35 7. As Princeton, which started season by setting back football 100 years, closed the 10 year by surprising undefeated Dartmouth and commanding its own share of the Ivy League title. Indians made three miscues. Halfback Bob Neal, Balakar, poor quick kick, and quarterback Jim Chasey's underthrown interception, and Chasey's fumble at his own 13-yard line. Each error positioned Tigers for touchdowns that all but salted away result at 21 to nothing by halftime. Starting only his second game of season, sophomore halfback Hank Bedroklin Rushed for 132 yards on 30 carries and scored three times for Princeton. Next, Penn State, the number four team in the country, beat Pittsburgh 27 7. Inspired Pittsburgh enjoying mild renaissance under new coach Carl D. Pasqua, and identified Penn State game as glorious opportunity. The Panthers deep and sparked by linebackers like Ralph Sindrich and George Brown, defensive tackles like Lloyd Weston and John Stevens. Held Lions ground game well in check during 7-7 deadlock in the first half. Only exception was Nicky Lions fullback Franco Harris 24-yard touchdown run. Fullback Tony Esposito tied it in second quarter at the pick got benefit of fourth down roughing the penalty roughing the pass the penalty. Despite throwing his shoe, Penn State linebacker Dennis Anconce returned pit punt 71 yards to the five-yard line in third quarter, and it led to the first of two runs for touchdowns by halfback Charlie Pittman. The Lions defense allowed no first downs in the second half and set up team's last touchdown with Paul Johnson's interception. West Virginia, the number 18 team in the country, beat Syracuse by a score of 13-10. Syracuse hard luck loses of two games by one point each. Seem headed for spoiler roll against Peach Bowl bound West Virginia. Mountaineers bubble football six times, losing three, and these misuse to aid it. Orange missed 10 nothing halftime lead. Fullback Al Newton followed kicker George Jockowinko's left Jockowinko's 47 yard field goal with one yard touchdown run in second half, second quarter for Syracuse. After losing fumble at Syracuse five yard line, West Virginia came back with 51 yard march as quarterback Mike. Sherwood picks four yard touchdown pass on fourth down. Less than two minutes later, Sherwood flipped tricky lateral to fullback John Braxton, who went 65 yards to win a touchdown. Next, Maryland beat Virginia 17 to 14. South Carolina beat Clemson by a score of 27 13. And the upset of the year by far was Michigan, the number 12 team in the country, upset number one Ohio State 24 to 12. Seemingly invincible number one Ohio State Buckeyes saw their 30, their 22 game winning streak came come to a stunning halt as Michigan claimed Rose Bowl bid. Confident coach Bo Schimbetler said it would have rejected had it lost. Ohio State Scored first um, one yard plunge by a fullback. Jim Otis had 144 yards rushing, but missed the kick. When fumble, Garvey went fullback. Beg your pardon. When fullback, Garvey Crawl scored first of his two touchdowns. Wolverines led 7 6. The first time all season that Ohio State had trailed. Quarterback Rex Kern, who later would be yanked with four interceptions, threaded 22 yard touchdown to tight end Jan White. For 12 7 Ohio State lead early in the second quarter. Michigan answered with a 67 yard drive for 14 12 lead. The key play came next when Wolverine's defensive back, Barry Pearson, who had three interceptions, returned punt 60 yards to lead to quarterback Don Moorhead's touchdown run. Neither team scored in the second half as Michigan executed great plays on defense, according to Schimbecker. Ohio State coach Woody Hayes called his second half. Offense miserable as it failed to penetrate Michigan 44 yard line until late going. 
Nebraska, number 16 team in the country, beat Oklahoma by score of 44-14. Nebraska headed to Sun Bowl at the gaining share of the Big 8 title in Missouri, which trounced Kansas 69-21. 69-21. Tell back Jeff Kenny sparked the Cornhuskers with boatload of offensive gems. 127 yards on 35 carries, rushing. 127 yards rushing on 35 carries, including three and 11 yard touchdown runs. Six yard touchdown catch from wing back Van Brownson. And surprise touchdown pass to wing back Guy Ingles. But it was Nebraska's magnificent defense that limited Sooners' Big 8 best rushing attack to 121 yards. Oklahoma tailback Steve Owens only had 71 yards rushing on 21 carries, saw into his record 17 game 100 yard plus rushing streak. That had started after Notre Dame had stopped him way back in the 68 season opener. Owens also failed to score a touchdown for the first time in 16 games. Oklahoma quarterback Jack Mildred had provided a brief 7 up the lead with an 18 yard run and aided at a late 16 yard touchdown pass to wingback Jeffrey Norgren. Norgren. In between, Huskers tied it on Brown, Brownson's 1 yard run in the first quarter. Took a 14-7 lead on Kenny's first quarter, first score in the first quarter. So it blew op it open in third quarter, and Kenny scored three t and three touchdowns for a 30-7 advantage. Colorado beat Kansas State 45-32. Utah beat Brigham Young 16-6. Southern California, the number six, number five team in the country, Southern California, beat number six UCLA, fourteen to twelve. The Trojans marched to their fourth straight Rose Bowl berth, ripping rival UCLA in first match since 1952 that pitted unbeaten crosstown rivals. Bruins had opened with growl as quarterback Dennis Dummett hit three passes before tailback Greg Jones lofted surprise 41-yard touchdown pass to wingback George Farmer. But Bruins' two-pack point pass failed when Dummett's throw was tipped by on Russian Troy defensive end Charlie Weaver. USC continued to launch his wild bunch defense in Dummett's directions, sacking him nine times and forcing five interceptions. Still, Dummett managed 80-yard drive with just over three minutes left to play, mostly on his passes, topping it with seven-yard touchdown pass to wide receiver Gwen Cooper for 12-7 lead at the sophomore wingback Brad Lyman caught 57-yard pass. The Trojans quarterback Jimmy Jones, who had posted a miserable passing day, one only one completion in the first 57 minutes, suddenly came alive with three straight connections. Jones missed his next four throws. The UCLA defensive back Danny Graham committed interference on wingback Sam Dickerson as receiver broke to the sideline for short pass on fourth and ten. From UCLA 43 yard line. Jones passed sailed high, and another error penalty against Graham would have been overruled as uncatchable pass, but no such rule existed in 1969. Was Jones launched 32 yard winning score to Dickinson on next play as speedy wide receiver beat defensive back Doug Huff was surged to deep left corner of end zone with 132 to go in the game. Afterward, Graham summed it up for broken hearted Bruins. It seemed like my whole life just went down the drain. This result was 12th in time, 12th time in the last 20 games that USC had trailed. Had, excuse me, USC had rallied in the fourth quarter to win or tie. And finally, number 14, Stanford, defeated California 29-28. Expected passes of Stanford quarterback Jim Plunkett got Indians rolling early. Plunkett connected with hunchback Howie Williams for 47-yard touchdown. And wide receiver Jake Jack Lasseter for a 72 yard touchdown on Tribe's first two possessions. The Golden Gophers, the Golden Bears, rather, trailed 17 under, but little known quarterback Dave Penhall rallied them to within 20 to 14 at halftime, striking for Penhall's four yard touchdown run and 37 yard touchdown pass in two minute span of fourth quarter. Now, Cal suddenly enjoyed 28 23 edge. Stanford would retaliate with 80-yard ground march. Captain Bob Williams winning four-yard touchdown burst up the middle with four minutes left. 
So that concludes look at week 10. The week that was college football history review. The 1969 college football season. Here's the AP poll as it looks. It's November 24th. Number one was Texas. Number two was Arkansas. Three was Penn State. Four was Ohio State. Five, Southern California. Six, Missouri. Seven, Michigan. Eight, Notre Dame. Number nine was Louisiana State. Ten, Tennessee. The rest of the top 20 look like this. UCLA at number 11. 12, Auburn. 13, Nebraska. 14, Mississippi. 15, Stanford. 16, Purdue. 17, Florida. 18, Houston. 19, West Virginia. And number 20, Toledo. So that concludes a look at the week that was college football season review, the 1969 college football season for week number 10 for November 22nd, 1969 for week 10. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Please like and subscribe and comment on the channel. Do a video of the Smack 2 tomorrow. Until then, like, subscribe, and comment on the channel. Until then, do a new video of the Smack 2 tomorrow. Talk to you soon.